call you Jehovah. Because we know there is nothing you cannot do. You are the only faithful God. All other gods, they are works of men. You are the only righteous and faithful God. We acknowledge you this morning. Be thou exalted in Jesus Christ's name. Because we know whatever we have brought to you today, you are able to fix it. You are able to make it well again. Father, be exalted in Jesus Christ's name. Because you are the transformer of our life. And so we brought our life to you because you are going to transform it today. We give glory to you because we already started. And we know you are going to complete it. Father, be exalted in Jesus Christ's name. Father, we don't have no other thing to say this morning. But just also say thank you, Lord Jesus. Because you have been awesome to us. From January to the first Sunday in the month of June, we just have to say thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. For all the evils we are hearing with our ears, the ones we are seeing with our eyes, but they never befall us, we give all the glory to you. For your provision, all we could just say is just to say thank you, Lord. We give glory to your name, Lord. Father, be exalted in Jesus Christ's name. We're, we've come to again this morning to hear from you. Fathers, feed us before we go in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have no word of our own. No knowledge of our own. We depend on your Holy Spirit. Have your way in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of everything, let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus Christ's name I prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat in God's presence. It is great to be in God's presence. We appreciate God for him keeping us and making us to sit today in peace and joy. Uh, like Charles Play, year 2022 is running fast. We are already on the last month of the first half of the year. And it's a great and wonderful thing. I know God has been faithful to us. And I know it will keep us to the hand in Jesus Christ's name. Open with me to the book of Joel, chapter 2. Book of Joel, chapter 2. Uh, we have two anchor texts for today, but I will just read the second one. As we go along, we got to talk about the first one. Joel, chapter 22, verse 23. I will read all through verse 25. Joel 2, verse 23. All through to 25. Be, be glad then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately. And it will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Amen. Today we'll be talking about restoration. We're talking about restoration. And I know many of us have different plans at the beginning of the year. Big, great plans. And some people are looking this morning and saying, this is first month in June. It seems things are not working. It's like everything I've planned is just getting destroyed in my presence. Don't worry. I'm glad to tell you this morning that all those things that you seem to have lost from the beginning of the year, God is coming to you in double portion in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be restored back and shall have a reason to testify in Jesus Christ's name. What is restoration? Restoration is the act of returning something to a former owner. That's what the dictionary said. So it means whatever belongs to you that has been taken off, it will, be, it will come back to you. Because you are the real owner. The health, the blessing, the spiritual growth, Every great thing that God has given to you, but the enemy has snatched away. Or God allow it to be because of a reason. I tell you this morning, God is returning it back to you in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's also
also a return of the monarch to a throne or head of state or a regime. When you bring them back, it's a restoration. And we know we are son of the king. And so we reign supreme. So wherever we have become slave, we have been walking like servants. God is restoring us this morning in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. There is always a lost year. As God people, sometimes we go through the period of time we call the lean year. If you remember in the book of Genesis, when Pharaoh saw the vision of the seven year of famine that will be coming, the Bible makes us to understand that there was a lean set of cows. So it's a lean year. It's a year where there is nothing. That period when things that are supposed to be are not available. Wasted years. It comes. It's a period when it looks like nothing much is happening. Or something is not just working for you. It's that period when you are tired and you think, oh, what is all this? It's the period you call the lost years. Imagine a child who finished from secondary school. And they have to stay at home for five years looking for jam, looking for wayek, and keep running and running around. I know some people are saying, oh, that's my story. But along the line, things get to work again and things get better. Those years, they are lost years. They are years when you achieve nothing. They are years when you cannot see any fruit of your labor. When you are working hard and it seems nothing is not just working. That is the period we are looking at. But if we walk close to God during this period, which we call the lost years, it's still the business of restoring that disappointing and damaged period of our life. It can bring restoration to our lost years. The lost years never need to be a wasted years. They don't ought to be a wasted years. They are here because God is going to bring it back. If we allow God's purpose to be accomplished in us, then those years will be restored back to us. Remember the story of Job. The Bible makes us to understand how rich and big Job was. Job never knew this story because we happened to read it. We saw, I know if it has to be Nigerian Nollywood story, they will not show us the devil part at the beginning. They will keep it as a suspense. They will only start showing us when the Job was rich. And all of a sudden, things begin to happen. And you all begin to say, uh, Job must have done something bad. That's why when I read the Bible, I don't blame the friend of Job. They don't know. You are blaming them because you know from the beginning what happened. But Job was still faithful. All he had was wasted. But one thing is this. God was able to restore it. So I, I want you to know, God can restore all that seems lost during the lost year. There is nothing. You see, with us, we count time. It has been five years I got married. It has been five years I've been looking for a job. It has been ten years I've done this. It has been this and done this. You count time. But when God restored those time, you ask yourself, have I wasted any year? And you say to yourself, no. Because when joy comes, those times of sorrow will be a thing of the past. You don't even remember them again. When people begin to tell you a story that you suffered, you say, ah, it seems so, but it was just a little while. Because God has erased them. That will be our testimony today in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. In our lives, we work hard. Sometimes we pray hard. Maybe... You want to woo a lady. You know how much you have to go. You know how much time it takes you before you get out of fear. Will you say it's a wasted period after getting her? No, it's not a wasted time. You have been waiting and saying, God, give me a good job. And you have been running from one place to the other, going for interview, doing this and that. When that great job comes around and God begins to bless you, you don't remember those times because they are just like, no, just some few times I was there. Or you wanted a child and you have been waiting on God. God, when will you do it? When he, do, when he has done it, you look as, oh, uh -huh, that used to happen. Oh, that's where it, where it is. God give you a testimony. 
that makes you forget about it. Or you have a child who has been, uh, you need to train up. You see, when you as a parent begin to train up your child, a day will come in your life, you ask yourself, you mean my child has grown to this level? There was a day I was looking at it and I was discussing with one of my colleagues. And we were, we're not talking about why heck all these things. Eh? So my own child is also writing why heck. Oh boy, you are becoming old. You don't know. You don't know because God is just making everything fall in place for you. You don't see them as wasted years. Because they are growing in your present and you are not seeing them even growing. It's somebody that will be telling you, these children are growing. You know? Because things are just falling in place. There are years when you are investing. And when sometimes when you are investing, you don't say it immediately. It's until when it starts to grow. There are some seeds. When you plant them, you have to wait for two, three, four years before they will come out, germinate. And in those periods, you still have to wait. Elephants has to take time before you could bear, bring back a child. So you need this period. Let's check some people's life and see how God did wonders in their life. Before I go to some four points that we need to know, then we're close. Remember the life of Joseph. The first thing God did for Joseph was to give him a vision. You see, you have just had a dream. The moon, the star, all of them, they were buying out for you. Okay, you're a great boy. You are in the bush, you are all guarding your, your shelf. And all of them, their own was bowing down for yours. A great vision to tell you where he's going to. But what happened to him? He went about telling his brothers, oh, this is what God is going to make me to be. I am going to be great. I am going to rule over you. I am going to be this and that. His father said, keep quiet. Don't say it. But his brother noticed and said, we will deal with you. So what happened? Go and see your brother. That was all his father said. And what did they do to him? They put him in a pit. It happened to all of us. You are boasted of what God has told you. You didn't keep your mouth together when God was telling you. And so they begin to gather against you. That vision God has shown to you. They put you in a pit thinking you will not rise again. They brought him out from the pit. They sold him into slavery. From slavery, he went to the dungeon, to the bottomless part of the dungeon. He becomes a prisoner, a permanent prisoner without case. No case was brought against him. He was just there and he will be there forever. The man who threw him to prison, do not even remember he threw anybody into prison again. He has forgotten about him. That's what they call lock you up and throw away the key. But what happened? There was a day God will make him to forget about all those period. That particular day, he woke up as a prisoner. But when he was going to bed, he was not a prisoner. He was the prime minister of a whole Egypt. So, what is your own case? God that could make someone to be a prisoner in the money and to sleep as the vice president, the second in command in whole Egypt. Remember, he's a foreigner. Is not even a citizen. So you ought not to be in that position. Then there is nothing God cannot do for you. You remember the story of Moses? Moses was born at a very troubling time. At a time when children are supposed to be killed. Every male child should be killed. But God gave him favor. And Moses, what happened to him was trained to become Pharaoh. He received the best training in the king's palace. But God told him, this is not the purpose I have for you. Even though you have been trained as a leader, I have a vision for you. You are meant to deliver these people. And because he's meant to deliver the people, he begins to take steps. He has to run away for his own life. Someone who has been living as a king, I imagine when he was going around and people would begin to pay obeisance to him. That's the prince coming. Now has to go into the wilderness. Become a shepherd man. He begin to rear animal for someone. Just to survive. And if you are to put you and high, will have said, God, you see, 
Generally, I was in the palace enjoying my life. You brought this trouble upon me. Imagine where I am now. We will have given God the sermon of his life and tell him what he ought to do and not to have done. But we don't know where he's taking us to. The journey may seem far, but surely it will take us there. That's one thing I'm sure about God. But one thing happened. God brought Moses back. It became a terror to Egypt. It became God to Pharaoh. And it became a leader that God has made him to be. And people can say, there has no be any other leader like Moses. That time he was in the wilderness became a training time for him and becomes a better person out for it. Even our Lord Jesus, when he was coming to this world, he was coming with a purpose. He's God. We know him. He's God. But he left his throne. He came to this world. And he was to be born as the king of kings. But the king of kings that he's supposed to be was born in a manger. Amongst animals. No. Even the poorest of us were not born in the manger. They will still get lay and still deliver us there. At least there will still be a house. But this one was born in the manger and he was supposed to be the king of kings. Jesus grew up as a carpenter boy. Learning from his father. Like pastor will say, Jesus must be obedient so they will they will not need to spank Jesus. Nobody will have spanked him. He will have been obedient. Go and bring that saw. He will have gone to bring it. But he grew up as, from that low esteem, low level. There were nobody in Israel. That was the level Jesus grew from. Remember, he was to be the king of kings. People oppressed him. They say a lot of bad things about him. They do a lot of things to him. They plan against him. They connive against him to put him away. And at the end, they accuse him of things he never did. And they killed him. The shameful death on the cross of Calvary. And that was the end of it. But one thing at the end is that he rose up from death and took his place as the king of kings. So it doesn't matter what you are facing today. There is hope for you. Doesn't matter what level you are today. God is going to take you to that place he has promised you from the beginning. It could be a training ground for you to get to where you are going. Remember the Israelites. They were supposed to be the special people of God created for God's purpose. But they have to become slaves to the people of, Pharaoh, of Egypt. They start building houses. They suffer all things. But something happened in the book of Exodus. Chapter 3 verse 22. When they were about to live. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor. And of her that sojourned in her house. Jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Raiment and ye shall put them upon your sons. And upon your daughter, ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Egyptians were made to pay for all the work they've done for free before. It was also free before. They were doing the work and nothing. They were suffering for it. But what happened? They have to pay. So don't mind. Don't worry. All you are going to all those that have been using you, they will pay for it. All those levels you have been going through, don't worry. Testimony is coming your way. I'm going to be looking at four points of God's restoration. And the two anchor points texts are Isaiah 54 and Joel chapter 2. The first one, God's restoration will renew your joy. When God restored you, there will be a great joy. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter one, 54 verse 1. Isaiah 54 verse 1. It says, Sing, O barren, 
thou, thou that did not bear, break forth into singing, cry aloud, thou that did not travel with child. For more are the children of desolate than the children of the wife of the married wife, saith the Lord. When we struggle with difficulties in life, that is our lost year, it will be a time of sadness, time of sorrow. There's that time when you look as if the whole world is coming, is crumbling on you. You have a lot of questions to ask. But no answer is coming forth. But Isaiah 54 verse 1 has told us that even barren will sing. So a time for you to sing is coming very shortly. And you are going to sing. The whole world will join you in singing. Because that is the promise of God for you. When you go to that Joel I read. 22, Joel 2 verse 23. It says... Be glad then, ye children of Zion. And when you are glad, a song will come to your mouth. So brethren, joy has been lost in your life. Is that your case? Are you finding it difficult to sing a new song today? Is it tough for you to even smile? I want to tell you something. Look unto God for restoration. And it will surely renew your joy. It will give you a song and the song will come from your heart. Papa, we always said, you will walk and walk and just begin to praise your hand and to praise God. God will restore you in such a way that when you just walk and walk, you will just stop and you will start dancing. And people will say, is he mad? And you tell them, I am not mad. What God has done for me, I cannot tell it all. Because it's beyond my knowledge. It's too much for me. I don't know where to start from. Somebody in this church has always been coming. When they come, he said, you know, I told you, I don't know where to start from, but I will give you part one. And we've had part two. And we've had part three. I said, I don't know. I know part four and five will still come. Because God has done something great. When God has done something for you, you will look around and say, where should I start from? People know my story, but my story now has changed. What should I say to God? Let me give you a story of someone. If you are used to the hymns, it's called Fanny Crosby. Or Crosby. She's a songwriter. Um, story makes us to understand that she lost her sight when she was very young. Not because of anything but doctor's mistakes. And so she lost her eyes. But one thing about this woman is this. She wrote several songs. She wrote several. And one thing I found common in her song is something about sight, is something about vision. She's the one that wrote Blessed Assurance. When you read through Blessed Assurance, there's a verse that says, Vision of righteous, of rapture, burst out on my sight. This is somebody who cannot see. But he has this joy, something from within that comes and brings out the songs from her. Because God has done something beyond the ordinary. Though she doesn't have eyes, but she has the spiritual eyes that come forth and she can sing. I imagine the case of Anna, how she last started singing and dancing when she was carrying the child. When God restores you, you have a reason to dance and celebrate. You have a reason to sing a new song to God. And I'm saying to you today, that, that will make you sing a new song. That thing that will happen to you, that you will begin to sing in the morning, in the afternoon, in the new town, will begin to take place in your life that manifests our Lord Jesus Christ. From henceforth, a song of joy will fill your mouth in the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are not only going to be singing with others, but people are going to be joining you to sing a great song in the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That hopelessness, comes to an end as from today in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the song of a new testimony, song that people have never heard before, becomes your portion today in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because God will restore you. People will come to give testimony with you. The whole world will gather to celebrate you. Let's have a seat in God's presence. The joy of the Lord 
will be your strength. You will look back and you will rewrite your story. You will look at those pages before and say, no, this wasn't my story. I think I have a song that can cultivate all my story. Because when God restores you, song of joy will come. The second one, when God restores you, it will expand your influence. When it restores you, your influence will be, will be restored and will be enlarged. Let's go to Isaiah 54, verse 2 and 3. He said, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cord and strengthen thy stake. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate city to be inhabited. Amen. Amen. When you look at that verse, there is a word of enlargement, stretch, wide. Do not hold back. Increase the length. And this is going to be your testimony. Because there is going to be expansion for you on all sides. Because God is restoring you. When there is expansion, there everybody will see it. He said, when God comes in his mighty hand, you don't need to begin to say, can't you hear, can't you see? Because God has done it. Somebody who came to borrow food, beg for food yesterday, and today could give abundance to others, he doesn't need to tell people. They can say it. So God wants to, instab- he wants to extend your kingdom. So if you are willing to trust in God for expansion and spread out, under his anointing, then I said to you, you are going to see greatness. That your ministry that seems stagnated and it's not growing, it's not moving on. God said he wants to restore you and make you great in Jesus Christ's name. He wants to make you stronger and better. God can still enlarge you in 2022. That's one thing I want you to be sure of. Amos 9, 13 says, The day are coming, declare the Lord. When the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one spreading grape that is harvesting at its best. So a time of your harvesting is coming. Time when you are going to harvest great thing is now. Because all you have been planting, all you have been sowing, all you have been crying for, every day, every night, you have been calling on God, God, when will it be my turn? This is the time of harvest. And people will come from the north, from the east and west to celebrate you. You don't need to struggle. It is not something you will begin to cajole people to do. Because they will see God's glory. Because God is enlarging your course. And your influence will spread beyond your own tentacle. It will spread beyond your family. It will spread beyond your borders. It will go to a great length. Because God himself is involved. I go back to the life of Joseph. Because that's a clear example. He was supposed, in his own mind, to be the leader of his family. Because that's where he could see. But what happened to him? He got beyond his family to become a great man in Israel and Egypt. And not in Egypt. His influence ran around to other nations of the world of that time. Because everybody that come to buy food in Egypt must meet him. You must consult with him. You must get to see him. He must give you approval before you can do anything. And so, you can't tell me you don't know about somebody called Joseph. Or else you are not going to eat. His brother came and said, you see that man there? We cannot go to him again. Or if we go to him without our younger brother, there is nothing. He will not attend to us. He will throw us in jail. Because he has become prominent. His influence has widened. So, it's the same kind of ministry you are looking at. God wants to enlarge your coast. So get ready. So sometimes, those fasting and prayer you are going through and you are praying and say, God, when will be my turn? He's just training you for that place he's taking you to. Those tough times you are going through, he's just giving you a story to tell. Sometimes God makes you go through some things so that when you want to counsel people, you have a word to say. So it looks as if things are tough for you. Yes. You are not the only one. It's a training ground for you. And you get there. 
So Joseph, if he has not been to prison, he will not know how life in prison was. So it becomes better and his influence grow. So the moment God restores you, you have a better influence around you to everybody, to everywhere you go to. And I can believe God for a greater influence in 2022 for all of us that matter of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not just going to be a local champion. We are going to be having global impact in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In every facet of our life, God is going to make us a greater us than the of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are not just going to be looking at the purpose of God for your life. You are going to fulfill it at, your own, at the right time of God in the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God has a time for his own things. It is us that can't slack. That say, oh, God is delaying. If God wants it to happen when you are 40, you won't haste it up for him to do it at 30. You can't bribe him. If that is his plan, he will make sure it comes to pass at that time. So all you need to do is fall into God's plan and walk with him. He will take you through it. And when his time comes, you will look as if you are the best of all. You will look as if you know how to pray more than every other person. Because you have fallen into God's plan. But most of the time, what happens to us is we have our own plan and we want God to follow our plan. But the moment you can walk into God's plan and not God walking into your own plan, your life will be better. Restoration will be easier if he's the one that has the plan. But if it's your own plan that you want him to fit into, it may not really work for you. So we need to follow God's own plan. Thirdly, when God restores you, it will remove your shame. Do you know how it could be when you are going through a troubling time? You have been out of school for four or five years and you could not get a job. You are still depending on your parent for feeding. Do you know how it could be? I suffer same when I finished school. I remember when one of my dad friends came around and said, They can start following you to sight. My dad used to be a bricklayer, glorified civil engineer. And I said, Let them follow you, they will learn from you, and this like that. I would say, Ah. God have mercy. But when God takes you out, things become different. There's one day I will always remember. I was coming back from Polybad, and luckily I met with this lady. She stayed in the same compound with us. The money with her cannot take her home. The money with me can take me to Lagos. But combined, the two money cannot take both of us to Lagos. So we have to go and best driver. Driver, please, you will help us. Out of this money that is not complete, we are still going to take out of it to take bus from wherever you drop us to our house. And driver now said, Ah, man, don't run in law school. Is it compulsory you go to school? Why don't you go and learn one trade if your parents cannot avoid money? I said to myself, oh, God. See what Allah for life. But that guy cannot talk to me and tell them that to me again today. Because God has done something. You see, there is a place we are going. And you will suffer shame, but God will take you there. And when he takes you there, you will remember those days and you will just laugh. That time you are crying. But when he does it, you will just be laughing. Because it becomes a story. And it become an interesting story that people will hear and say, no, God is faithful. Isaiah 54 verse 4 to 6. He says, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. I thought somebody would say a big amen. amen. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Amen. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth shall not remember the reproach of the widowhood anymore. Amen. For the maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thy redeemer, the only one of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For he, for the Lord has called thee a woman for, for the Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of the youth when thou was refused said the Lord. You see, a time comes when sorrow and shame from your young age, from old in this come to pass. Many of us, we know how we, used to, how we used to be when we were small. 
When you look at your house, how many of you live in one room? Begin to look at it. We were seven. I had my daddy and mommy. We are nine. And we, we have to manage. I remember I have my own special chair that I sleep on. You don't go there. But that's the way we grew up. So when I and I have a room to myself, and I was not like, ah, you are not a big boy. The mat is very long. All of you, you arrange yourself according to your height on the mat. That's the way you sleep. But it becomes better. I was talking to one of my colleagues, and he was saying, yeah, look at these children. They are going, they are trekking so far. And I told, ah, I said, when you were in secondary school, how many kilometers did you used to trek? I said, I never remember that that place was far. It's now that it's drawing on me that it's far. That's the way we grew up. But those things have become history. And that's what God wants to deal with us. He wants to take away all those shame, those reproaches. Those people who have called you barren. This one is good, good for nothing. Don't worry, they are coming to celebrate with you. Those that say, ah, this one, forget. We are not talking about this type of people. Don't worry. By the time your testimony will come, they will all be saying, oh, we never thought this would be good for you. Your God is faithful. Take me to that, your God. That's what God can do. So, do not be afraid. Don't allow whatever you are going through now to put you to a corner. Don't allow it to disappoint your mind and say, no, God is not faithful. God is ever faithful. He has said it. He will surely do it. You just believe in him. At his own time, it will do it. It's just preparing you for something great. If Moses, on, at that time, I said, no, I can't go to this wilderness. I will always better be what I want God has made me to be. I have a better position before. I tell you, it won't have work. Joseph was trying to bribe his way out. Please, when you get out, help me tell Pharaoh. You see my case? No key, nothing has been forgotten here. I didn't go to court. I didn't go to anything. I was just abandoned here. Please. If that man had said, okay, bring him out. He would have brought him out. He would have run back to his father's house. And when it's time to re remember the story, interpret the story, it won't be available. I mean, his vision would just have been dead. And would just be in his father's house, doing wearing a coat of many colors, and would have just been an abandoned child there. But because God must take away the shame, those disgrace that he suffered, he becomes a different person. Paul the Apostle suffered the same thing. It went through a lot of shame, a lot of ridicule. They have to stone him. They have to do a lot of things to him. But still, he was able to preach the gospel. Remember Jesus. He was put on the cross. He was crucified. So as to take away our shame, our reproaches. So if they would do the same to Jesus, then who are you that you are not going to suffer the same? So those who are mocking you, who are calling you names, don't worry. They will come back to believe you. And they will come back and say, where is your God? Many people who push Jesus to where it is, when he resurrected, he became their Lord and their God. And that's what God wants to do through us. So let's get ready and let's get prepared. Because of my time, let me quickly move on to the fourth one. His restoration will push back the opposing force. His restoration will push back the opposing force. You can read the book of Isaiah 54, 11 to 17. Right now, it looks like the opposing you have overcome, uh, may have overcome you. It may look like the enemies has won the battle. For some, it may seem like the wagging tongue are irreversible. Your situation uh, is hopeless. People are beginning to say a lot of things. Those who are your enemies are winning. Those who are mocking you, who are disgracing you, seems to be the one that are winning. But you are looking at yourself and saying, oh, when will they stop? There was a wise man that said a thing, and I will read. Plastic surgeon can do almost anything with a person's nose today. Except keep it out of other people's business. They can do anything. They can pancake anything, but they will still get involved in your business. So, if they don't talk about you, sorry, there is a problem with you. Whether you are good, whether you are bad, people will say. So, let them say. They are the enemy. 
Maybe they will be the one discussing your case until your case will get to the place where, where your destiny is meant to be fulfilled. So they can do whatever they like. Let them keep talking. You keep doing what God has asked you to do. Let them keep saying it. You keep doing what the right thing in the presence of God. And very soon, they will be asked to keep quiet. As I said, I will build you up. That's verse 11. O thou afflicted and tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay the stone with fair color. That's what God said. He will lay you, don't worry. God will take you out of that place. So as they are gathering, let them gather. It is good when they gather. That's what the Bible says. He said, let them gather. I love it when they gather. Because when God wants to deal with them, it is better they are many. So that I just deal with all of them at once. When they come like a mighty rushing wind, God just needs to raise a standard. And all they do is, everybody go back to his base. Because you have God. And I love verse 17 of that scripture. He said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of God. So let them keep talking. Let them keep saying it. God will fulfill his, your, his purpose in your life. That's all you need to know. So all the things that you think be wasted, I'm telling you this morning, God said he wants to restore them back. He wants to make you better. Because he has a promise for your lives. And as he begins to round up, let me also share with you a verse in the book of Psalm. Chapter 18, verse 48. I read the New Living Translation. You owed me save beyond the reach of my enemy. That's what New Living Translation says. You owed me save beyond the reach of my enemy. God is going to take you to a place when those who think they are your enemy begin to try to reach you and they cannot. Imagine you are sitting up here and some little children wants to draw you down. You know how it is. You know when you pick something from a child and you raise it up and say, come and take it. You know how they jump and do this. That's what it becomes. They just be looking at you and say, oh, we will come down. And the more they think you will come down, you are going higher. Because higher and higher is the place God has created for you. So we are moving up. So forget about whatever is going on. Because God is taking you somewhere. God restoration will bring the victory. The power of God is greater than anything that will come against you. So let them come. He has a power to defeat all your enemies. To stop whatever is coming your way. If only you will trust on him. Brethren, let's not get weary of waiting. Don't be discouraged. It is now 10 years you'll be married. It is now 5 years this has happened to you. Don't be discouraged. A time is coming and it's going to do it. God will make it worthy of your weight. Prepare yourself for the restoration that God is bringing your way. Because it's going to be bam. It's going to be great. It's going to be beyond human understanding. You just get ready. So that when it comes, it's not the one that will break your net. It's the one that will make you happy. And you can bring to the shore. And people can see it. So you get yourself prepared. Keep walking the way of the Lord. Keep hoping in the Lord. Keep believing in the Lord. And when it comes, everybody will say it. It will restore all that have been lost during what seemed like the lost year and bring the autumn and the spring rain together. The first and the last rain, they will come together. And when they come, you will begin to enjoy it. Every eyes will say. So God said, I will repay you for all the year the locusts have eaten. And God restoration, in conclusion, will now renew your joy. God restoration will expand your influence. God restoration will remove your shame. And God restoration will push back all your enemy. If you can trust God for the remainder of 2022, great and wonderful thing will happen. Shall we rise up on our faith as we pray? Let's talk to God. God, I depend on you. Have your way in my life. That's all we are going to say. God, I depend on you. Have your way in my life. Can we open our mouth and begin to pray to God? God, have your way. I give all to you. I depend on you. I know you can do all for me. So I depend on you. Have your way in my life. Restore to me the job of my salvation. Restore all the years that have been wasted. 
and make me fulfill the purpose of your calling for my life. I don't just want to begin to live running after other people's purpose, but I want to fulfill that purpose which you have called me. Everywhere I've gone away from it, I've come short of it. Father, restored me back so that the purpose of God can come to pass in my life. So that the joy of the Lord can return to my life. So that I can begin to have influence of people around me and in my world. So that my shame can be taken away. So that all the forces opposing the progress of God in my life will begin to lie low. Pray unto God. Father, I depend on you. I cry unto you. I look unto you completely. Have your way. Take your place in my life. And let your name be glorified. We need to pray to God.